In this video, we'll be working on a series of IR spectroscopy problems. So one thing about the IR spectroscopy is when you first look at it, you see all of these peaks ranging from the beginning to the end of the spectrum, and it's sometimes confusing and overwhelming thinking that how am I going to figure out all of these peaks and how am I going to analyze finally and make sense of all of that and get the correct structure according to the spectrum. Well, there is a good news here. The thing is, IR spectroscopy is not a comprehensive spectroscopy. So this means that you are not going to determine the structure of the compound most of the time solely based on the IR spectroscopy. IR spectroscopy is used largely to identify the functional groups that we have in the molecule. And for that, we don't have to look at all the peaks on the IR spectrum. So on any IR spectrum, we have two regions. We have the diagnostic regions, which lies above the 1500 line. And everything on this side below 1500 line is called the fingerprint region. Fingerprint region is only going to be necessary if you have very similar compounds and we're going to get into very detailed analysis and see how we're going to find a way to distinguish between these two compounds. So we can think about it this way. We don't have to look at the fingerprints of a person if we have other clear evidences like videos or photos. Right? So we'll go only here if there is a special need for that. And so with that said, right from the beginning, when you're looking at an IR spectrum, you can for a moment ignore this part. So we're going to look at the part going from 1500 to about 3600. Even in this region, there's mainly going to be three parts that we're going to pay attention. The number one thing is you want to identify what types of carbon and hydrogen bonds you have. And so more specifically, you want to identify whether the carbon-hydrogen bonds correspond to carbons that are sp3, sp2, or sp. It's possible to have a molecule that have all sorts of carbons, right? It can be all sorts of hybridizations, but it's possible that maybe you only have sp3 or sp2, etc. And that is achieved pretty simply. So all you gotta do is, in your first step, draw a line at exactly 3000, right? So drag this up, and what you're trying to see here is whether you have peaks that lie below the 3000, or you have the ones that are actually a little bit beyond the 3000. The message here, as you can see in this chart, is if your peaks are only up to 3000, this means that these are sp3 carbons connected to hydrogens. So essentially, this is the vibrational frequencies of the carbon-hydrogen bonds, and these are the carbons that are sp3 hybridized. If you also have peaks here, this means that you also have sp2 CH bonds. So at this point, we have enough information to look at our structures and perhaps eliminate some of the structures. For example, here, if you're looking at the top number one, I see that all of these carbons here are sp3, except the one on the carbonyl that's sp2. But remember, again, this is we're talking about the carbon-hydrogen bonds. We are not just talking about the hybridization of the carbon. And so looking at this, we can say that, for example, right from the beginning, that it's not going to be this compound. It's impossible because we don't have sp2 CHs. But let's also identify the other two key regions on the IR spectrum. The next thing you want to do is you want to look for a broad peak. Usually, so this broad peak goes from about 3200 to 3600. It's going to be on the top part. So looking something like this, right? So it's going to be something that is very distinct from the others because it's so broad. And this peak, usually the broad peak goes pretty down. It may go down even more. When we're saying down, this means that it's a stronger absorption, and on the IR spectrum, we are identifying the regions from weak to medium and strong. And this is how it works. So roughly, you want to get the first third of the peak from the top, and we're going to say that everything within this region, these are weak peaks. The second third is going to be the peaks that are the medium peaks. So let's say all the way right here, we're going to say that these are the ones that correspond to the medium strength. And the peaks that reach the bottom of the spectrum, almost, for example, you can see here that this is a strong peak. Right? So then this is going to be strong. Keep in mind that this is relative and it's gonna vary based on the compound that you have and based on the IR spectrum that you gain. But this is just to have an idea and be able to classify the peaks based on the amplitude of their absorption. All right, so these then, if we had this strong peak right here, this would correspond to either the OH or you can have NH and NH2. 
So hydrogen connected to header atom is going to give a broad peak. And that we can also see here. So from about 32 to 3600. The next part, the next key region is going to be the peak at about 1700. And this is very important. So you can see here from about 1650 to 1800, most of the time it's going to be at about 1700 and you're going to have a strong peak. So what this tells us is that this compound contains a carbonyl, right? So carbon double bonded to oxygen. And so this can be anything. It can be either a ketone, aldehyde, carboxylic acid, ester, acid chloride, anhydride, and etc. So anything containing the C double bond is going to have a peak at about 1700. In most cases, if you look at these three regions, if you look at this region for a broad peak, if you identify the CH types of bonds and the carbonyl compounds, I would say probably at 80% of the time you'll be able to actually get a good idea about the structure of the compound. And if you have a multiple choice like here, you would be able to identify which one it is. Though sometimes you may go a little bit into more details, but in the following examples, so overall we have 12 examples solved here, we'll go through most of these and see how we're going to correlate the additional details to what we have talked about here to these three key regions. So now we have some information. We know that we have the carbonyl, we know that we have sp2CHs, we know that we have sp3CHs, and so let's see what we can figure out. Uh, so there's no OH and NH, right? So this means that right from here, we can exclude the compounds on the right, because we don't have the hydroxyl groups, and these are not candidates. And that said, at this point, we have only two possibilities, so it's going to be B or C. How do we distinguish between these two? Once again, you need to remember that the carbonyl is a very, very important peak in the IR spectroscopy. And because we have the CO here, then this means that it can only be this one. And this is not possible because of the missing of the carbonyl peak. A few additional details that we can see looking at this IR spectrum would be these peaks. So usually you get a series of these peaks. So these are weak peaks going from about 17 to 2000. These are called the aromatic overtones. And this is mentioned here on the bottom, right? So because sometimes you may have compounds like these, for example, where you have a double bond and you have a carbonyl and you need to be able to distinguish between these two. And the key here is that this is not gonna have the aromatic overtones. Also, the other two peaks that are very common in the aromatic compounds are going to be here at about 1600 to 1650. Here that is mentioned also, we have these two peaks corresponding to aromatic compounds. Now with this knowledge base, let's go to the next problem. Okay, so we got to this spectrum. Now let's see what we have here. Let's first identify what types of CH bonds we have. So just track this up at exactly 3000. And what we see is that we have only sp3CHs here. If we had sp2CHs, we'd also have the peaks all the way up to about 3100 or 3200, so we don't have them. Next, if we look at this at exactly 3300, this corresponds to the SPCH. So we have a triple bonded carbon with a hydrogen. So this means that we have an external alkyne. Next, let's look at the hydroxyl and the amino group region. So here we don't have a broad peak. That means that we don't have any OH or NH, any primary or secondary amine. And also by looking at the 1700 region, we can see that we don't have the carbonyl. Right, so there's no C double bond O here. Now let's go over the molecules that we have. So number one, A, here we have a compound that has sp2 and sp3 carbons. And this compound cannot be the correct candidate because in our target molecule we have sp carbon. So this is not there. And again, when we say sp carbon, we mean that there's a carbon that is sp hybridized and it's connected to hydrogen. So this peak right here corresponds to the CH vibrational frequency. In the next one, so we have the triple bond this time, that is correct. We have the sp3 carbons, that is correct. But we also have the hydroxyl group here, which would have been here from about 32 to 3600, a broad peak. And this excludes the possibility of molecule B. Now let's look at molecule C. 
in molecule C, we have sp3CH bonds, right? So all of these carbons are sp3CH bonds. We have two carbons triple bonded, and so that's the spcc bond. And by the way, that's going to be here. So this is the carbon carbon triple bonded, which we can find here in the chart. It can be either carbon carbon or carbon nitrogen. They both are at about this region. Now, the problem with this is that here we have a CH3. And this means that this wouldn't have the peak at 3300 that corresponds to the SPCH. So then we eliminate this one as well. In the next example though, yes, we have this part, but now we also have the SP2CH bonds, which would have been at about 31 to 3200. And the lack of these peaks means that this is also out. So logically, this is going to be the compound, but we want to see actually if all the peaks match here. So one on the left side, we have the sp3CHs that are here. We have the triple bond of the CC, which is here as well. We have the sp hybridized carbon with the hydrogen, so at about 3300, and that's also here. So all the peaks match, and this is going to be the correct compound. Okay, now let's look at this one. So here, this region at about 3000 looks a bit different. And uh, the reason for this is that we have an overlap. But first, let's draw the 3000 line and see what types of CH bonds we have. So at about 3000 right here, what we see is that, so basically there's a separation. So everything from this side for to up to here, this will be the sp3CHs. And this right here is the sp2CHs. The reason they're looking like this is because there's also an OH peak. And if the OH peak was standalone by itself, it will look like something like this. So this will be the OH peak. And behind the OH peak, we have the sp3 and sp2 CH bonds. So behind that, we'll have all of these peaks and they're overlapping. And as a result, they just look as a one a little complicated peak, but that's all to it. So we have the OH overlapping with these CH bonds. Now, if we look at our compounds, let's find the ones that have OHs. So here we have an OH, so that's a possibility. And these two are also possibilities. And these two don't have the OH peaks. Uh, furthermore, so if we're looking at um, 1700 region, we can see that definitely there's a carbonyl here. So you can clearly identify the strong peak at 1700, and this would correspond to either of these compounds having the carbonyl. But on the other hand, we have just seen that these two cannot match the compound because they lack the OH. So these are out then, and we have this. Because the first one does not have the carbonyl, then this is also going to be out. And out of these two, we need to decide which one is the correct molecule. So the key difference between these two is that here we have sp2CHs, here we don't have sp2CHs, right? So, and we see that in our molecule, actually on the spectrum, we see these peaks, and that's why this is going to be out, and this is going to be the correct molecule here. 